Well, good morning, Plum Creek Church. Come on, let's stand up today. We're going to worship our God. We're going to sing it out. Come on. Hey. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in all his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Come on. Who the sun sets free. Oh, it's free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Free at last, He has ransomed me. His grace was deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died. Yes, he died for me Who the sun sets free War is free I'm a child of God Yes, I am In my Father's house There's a place chosen he calls us his own he calls us his sons and his daughters today no matter what you're facing our heavenly father has your back he's faithful come on we're going to declare this with all we got i am chosen not forsaken i am who you say i am you are for me not a
If you turn to the person next to you, shake a hand, give a high five, and have a seat. Well, good morning, everybody. So glad to have you with us here at Plum Creek Church. My name's Gary, one of the pastors here on staff. And again, welcome. Uh, If you're a guest, we are so glad you're here. We know there's a ton of great churches in this area. And so it's a uh, honor that you are with us today. And we would love to have record of your visit. So there's a Next Steps card in the seat back pocket in front of you where you can just tell us a little bit about yourselves, how you heard about us. And if you fill that out, you will get a a contact from us this week. We'll just ask about your experience here at church. That's all that will happen with that. But something we try and say every weekend for our guests, and it's a reminder to all of us, is our mission. And that is change lives changing lives because it's not just what God has done in us as amazing and awesome as that is it's what God wants to do through us in being a part of changing others lives uh, for the gospel of Jesus something we do every weekend is receive an offering and so some of you came ready and I just want to say thank you thank you for your partnership we are trying like I said to change lives here in this area and around the world as well there's an envelope that tells you uh, more about uh, the ways to give and how to give and that's in that same seat back pocket in front of you and we are just so um, privileged to have such great generous hearts here at Plum Creek and generous hearts lead to generous habits so again thank you if you came ready to give uh, at the very end of the service there will be ushers uh, at the doorways to collect next steps cards and to collect uh, your offering envelopes and so you can you can drop it in there something that we uh, do uh, once a month is first step and it's happening today right after this service first step is a place if you're new or want to get connected or find a place to serve here at Plum Creek uh, this is this is the best way to do that and so after the service right across the hallway and in the room on the other side uh, there will be some staff people there that will help you uh, get connected or find a place to serve uh, here at Plum Creek and we've got a little gift uh, to give to you as well Well, again, we are excited that you're here this morning. It's a great, great weekend, and it's so exciting to see what God is doing in and through us as a church. Let's watch this video. Plum Creek. My name is Jonathan. Welcome to episode one of Life Change TV. You've heard it said a whole bunch of times, change lives, changing lives. But what does that mean? What does that look like? Life Change TV is an opportunity to hear stories of how God is changing lives here in our community and using people just like you to help create change in the lives of others. In a bit, we'll hear from Eric, who serves on the media team and with our students. We'll hear why he chooses to give so much of his time and energy back to the church. But first, we have a brand new opportunity for the men of Plum Creek to connect at the first ever True Grit Conference. We'll hear from Chris, who found community through True Grit and why community with other guys has become an essential part of his relationship with Jesus. I was the guy that would come to church, you know, and then just kind of leave. But I did, you know, have that sense, hey, I wanted to get involved, I wanted to meet more people, be around others that had shared the same views, same faith, uh, wanted to take that journey further into faith. Chris decided to jump in, like all the way in, got involved with several groups, even leading his own group. He found that True Grit gave him an opportunity to strengthen relationships and strengthen his faith in a non-threatening environment. You know, we're guys, we're we're macho and you know, we don't want to talk to other guys and share our feelings with other guys. This gives us that safe outlet to do that, you know, to to have friends. And I I formed friendships that I know will last a lifetime. In addition to new friendships, Chris discovered one of the biggest keys to living a Jesus-centered life. You cannot do it alone. Men need other men to rely on, you know, because we've got our families relying on us. We've got our our kids, our wives, um, our jobs. You know, we got a lot of weight on our shoulders. 
it's good for your soul, right? I mean, you got to have those support of folks around you, you know, outside of your family, maybe outside of your, your circle of friends that you have right now. It grows your faith. It grows their faith. I've never been to any of the, the group events or the, the big, you know, events uh, where I didn't come out of there thinking, man, that, that was great. Guys, this opportunity is for you. Ladies, nudge one of the guys sitting next to you. Our first ever True Grit Men's Conference is happening September 20th through 22nd at Bear Trap Ranch near Colorado Springs. Spots are limited, so make sure you visit the True Grit guys in the atrium today or visit us online, plumcreek.church slash events. Growing up in the church, my dad was in a pastor of a small church, so as me and my two brothers, uh, we were the janitorial crew, the setup crew, the teardown crew, we, we did everything in the church. Um, and I think, Somewhat of that attitude just kind of carried over. I've always been um, somebody who enjoyed helping people inside and outside the church. I never was somebody who could sit in a seat. I look for every place I can to, to be involved. I, I love to be involved. I'm a junior high uh, small group leader. Uh, I'm a senior high small group leader. I work with the audiovisual and do lights and directing. I just thoroughly love it. I mean, I don't look at it for me as a task, it's, I look at it as something that I get to do. I just love this church and I love getting involved. You feel more of the church heartbeat and, and you get to know people and it's just a good way to, uh, to, to find satisfaction rather than just showing up and, and, uh, and leaving. It helps my, my spiritual life also because you're around a group of people that have the same goal and we pray for each other and, and we lift each other up. Whenever you accept Christ, you have that, um, you, you gain a depth of, of relationship with God. Uh, God never designed it to be uh, held inside and, and locked in. So I, I love to, uh, to, to take what I have, the experience I've had, the relationship I have with Christ, and, and work as much as I can to other people who may be on that journey to help them find a place where uh, they can have that relationship with God. Eric definitely understands that the work God has done in us is not only for us. We believe there is a role inside the church that needs you, that needs what you uniquely bring to the table. If Eric's story resonated with you, I want to encourage you to visit First Step after the service today. In the room right across the hall, there will be people there that can help you find a role that fits your skills and your schedule. If you've never said yes, this is your weekend. Well, thanks so much for watching this episode of Life Change TV. We are excited about what God is doing at Plum Creek and excited to share more stories soon of people living the vision of seeing changed lives, changing lives. Hey church, why don't you go ahead and let's stand up. Let's continue our worship and just declare our love for our mighty God. When darkness tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know I won't be shaken I won't be shaken Cause my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Oh. Shame no longer has a place to hide. I am not a captive to the lies I'm not afraid to leave my past behind No, I won't be shaken I won't be shaken Cause my feet doesn't stand a chance When I'm standing in your love My feet doesn't stand a chance when I'm
God, there's nothing that can take our hallelujah. There's nothing that can separate us from you today. So in this place, we come to worship you. We come to fix our eyes on your greatness and all that you are. Lord, I pray that you would just inhabit the praises of your people this morning as we lift you high, choosing to give you all glory and honor, no matter what we're facing, no matter the circumstance, no matter the situation today. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. Lord, we love you. We praise you today in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. Aren't you thankful to be in church today? Come on. Well, hey, it is so good to see you all here. Thanks for coming. Thanks for worshiping with us. So great to hear you singing it out this morning at this time. Please be seated. What's up, Plum Creek? Whew, wow, you guys are dragging this morning. I'm glad you're here. Thank you for being here. If you don't know me, my name is Doug. I'm one of the pastors here at Plum Creek. Glad that, uh, that you are here. I want to tell you a quick story. Uh, this church got started all the way back in 2006, and when we started meeting weekly in 2007, one month after we got started, there was this amazing family that showed up, and we're like, thank you, Jesus, this is awesome. And they're here today. And their names are the Sundeans. And they're sitting, I saw you come in. You guys are somewhere. There they are. And uh, they showed up. And we've been talking about this a lot. They, they were people that just everybody kind of was in the beginning, which we still need to be. But they were contributors. They jumped in. And they had this kid. And he was in fourth grade. And I had kids that were kind of the same age as their son. And so we've just kind of done life together over the last several years. And our boys all played football together and did sports and stuff, and <clears throat> Dylan has always been very, very, very involved here at Plum Creek, and um, junior high, jumped in 100% into the student ministry, senior high, same thing, started giving and serving and being part of uh, making a difference in people's lives, and somewhere around his junior or senior year, he started sensing that maybe the Lord was calling him into the ministry, and uh, he tried to run from that. Dylan's a stud. He, I mean, he, he got a football scholarship for college. And so he went off to school, but he still stayed connected. A lot of that's because of his parents and their example that they uh, have been. So he was serving, even while he was in school, he was serving, helping in a student ministry in, in uh, Springfield, Missouri. And then he came back and he served as one of our residents. And Dylan has always been involved and he's always invested his life into the lives of others. And um, over the last several years, he's continued to be part of this, and now he's on our team. He's part of our student ministry team, and ah, that just makes me proud. And uh, Dylan's, Dylan's one of my guys on, on Saturday. I have a group of folks that always help me evaluate my message, and Dylan's one of the crew that helps me uh, make sure that we get better. And so I'm super excited. You know why? He's helping me this weekend to teach. So you, can you guys welcome Dylan as he comes? <clears throat> <clears throat> Love you, bro. Ah, oh, this is fun. Now, Dylan, before we get started, I want to say something that is important. I want to I wanna just, just uh, say thank you, first of all, for uh, loving Jesus the way you do, and I want to thank you for making a commitment. Even before this was a, like a job for you, you were serving, and you yeah. were committed, and you were pouring your lives into students and making the difference, and and you know what it means to work hard and you know what it means to sacrifice and to give of your life to make a difference in other people's lives. And that has been recognized around here. Mm -hmm. And if you have students that are part of the ministry that Dylan's helping to lead, you'll know what I'm talking about because he just gives of himself, pouring into the lives of these students that are involved. And so I'm proud of you. Not only that, I want you to know this. I, I see something in you. And it gets me excited. It gets me excited because we have a little part to be able to um, see what God wants to do here and far beyond. And I want to affirm you in that. Dylan is an amazing communicator, and he's getting better all the time, and I love how hard you work. 
And so we get a chance to do this together, and I'm excited about that. And so what we want to do is hit pause for uh, this weekend from like a series or something like that. And we want to focus in on something that, that um, the Lord has told us to do. We want to focus in on something that matters deeply, and it's something that he told us to do often. So we're going to talk a little bit about communion. Why, Dylan, yeah. is it so important? Well, I, I, I was thinking this week uh, as we were preparing and, and just thinking the, the thoughts that came, I mean, communion is so important um, to us, more, more than we recognize, because seldom do we take time to stop, hit pause on our busy lives, um, and just sit, take a breath, and remember the sacrifice that Jesus died on, on, on the cross for us, and remember that. And, and, and when, we, when we remember that, it completely changes the game. And so I did a little exercise with myself this week, and at random times, um, I just kind of hit pause, closed my eyes, and, and took a deep breath. And uh, just the first thing that came to my mind, I, I just I kind of jotted down. And, and these are some of the things that, that uh, I thought about first throughout the week. And it's, why in the world is Joe Flacco unwilling to mentor our rookie quarterback, Drew Locke? <laughs> <laughs> or, or this one came to mind more than once, so uh, I know Jesus is trying to tell me something here. I should really stop demolishing a bag of Doritos in one sitting. <laughs> <laughs> or just things like the, the random things like groceries or, man, I got to pick up the dog food, things like that that, that make us busy and, and, and really cause us to, to cloud over the most important thing that we could ever remember in our lives. And that's the sacrifice that Jesus Christ made on the cross for us. He died for us. And when we remember that, it completely changes the game. Hmm. And, and I'm just as guilty of this as anybody. We get so busy, so, so distracted, and I think so comfortable in our routines that, that we forget uh, the most important thing we could ever remember, and that is what Jesus did for us on the cross. Yeah, for sure. When we were um, studying a couple of passages in Scripture together that talk about communion and the importance of it, uh, Dylan sent me this kind of just a bunch of his thoughts, and one of the things he said is, if we get this right, we'll have holy swagger. And I was like, that's legit, bro. That's what we're talking about. That's what we want to have. And so I, I was thinking about swag, and I was thinking about swagger, and what that, and a story came to my mind. Some of you guys, I think about swag, I think about Keith Norman. You guys know Keith, Pastor Keith? So he's a dear friend of mine. He, he teaches here uh, with regularity, and uh, we helped him. Back in the day, he's pastoring a church in Atlanta, and we had a small part in helping that get started. It's, it's, uh, it's been fun to watch that happen. But he's Uncle Keith to my kids. And I remember one time when he was hanging at our house when uh, the kids were young, and, and uh, Keith, I remember him calling Zach out. We call him Z. He's like, Z, stand up. He's like, you need more swag, brother. He's like, I'm going to teach you how to walk. And so he taught him how to walk with this, like, kind of just like this little gait to his step that just exuded confidence. He's like, now you got to just put your hat a little off center. If you can do that, man, that's just <laughs> swag. I was like, that's funny stuff. And so when Dylan said this, it reminded me of that story. But there's something even greater that can happen when we truly capture God's heart. And uh, if we do, and this is our main thought, if we remember this, constant remembrance prompts a holy swagger. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Yeah, so if we break that down, just simply looking at the two uh, definitions of those words, holy, um, you guys will see it on the screen, it's to be exalted or worthy of complete devotion as one perfect in goodness and righteousness. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that fits Jesus' character pretty well there. So that's the, the, the holy part. But then swagger comes into play, and, and that definition is bold assurance or to walk with an air of confidence, some swag. <laughs> and so as I was, these, these two words don't go together right away, right? When you look at the two definitions, they, they're, they're, they don't fit. Um, but when it comes to, to communion and what Jesus asks us to do, I think uh, as I was reading through Luke chapter 22 this week, um, I felt like the Lord just put those two words on my heart, holy swagger, holy hmm. swagger. So we got to unpack that a little bit. We got to be reminded because one of the things that uh, we're fearful of is that this is something that we've done so often that the significance and the meaning behind it can be something that is kind of blurred a little bit to us. And that's not okay. That's not what the Lord wants. There's a reason why he wants us to remember. And the reason why uh, remembering has the impact that it does and can give us a holy swagger, which means that we're going to do our day differently. We're going to think differently. We're going to approach temptation in our lives differently. We're going to do relationship differently. We're going to care about others differently. And, and when, we, when we remember what Jesus has done, it impacts us this way that we have this holy swagger. And we got to remember this. He loves you. 
Let me say it again. <laughs> he loves you. There we go. There we go. That's a big deal. You can't hear that enough. It needs to settle deep into our hearts and our souls. He loves you. And when you know that, you're going to walk with a different kind of confidence because the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords cares about you. That's incredible. Not only, it doesn't stop there. Not only that, but he also recognizes and sees the need in our life. He knows that we have challenges and issues. He knows that we have a sin issue so much so that he would send his son. He loved the world so much that he sent his son to come and die for us. And he paid that price so that you and I can now also have forgiveness. That should fire you up. Do you know how it feels to be forgiven? It's incredible. And that changes the way that we do our lives. Yeah, and that kind of reminds me of something. To date, I've been married for 253 days. Um, yeah, so. <laughs> Who's counting, right? Not, Who's counting? Not me, not me. But in those 250 some days, I know that there's already been times, and I know that there will be times in the future uh, where I drop the ball, where I kind of mess up, and I'm like, oh, man, I need to ask Katie for forgiveness. I need to go apologize. And, and I know that I can approach her with this confidence because of the relationship that we have with each other. And, and even more so when she says the words, I forgive you. Man, that does something inside of me that allows me to walk with my head held high in confidence with a little bit of swagger knowing that, that the past mistakes that I've made in our relationship aren't going to define our future. And that allows me to just walk with this kind of confidence knowing that, that she, she still loves me and she still cares. Hmm. That's powerful. Now, we, you know, we're not in any way trying to minimize the reality of the consequences of sin. That's real. And there are times when when those um, consequences do have uh, a consequence today. Uh, but um, there's something about being able to approach the throne of grace. Pausing long enough to reflect on our life and to lay these things before him yeah. and to sense and know his forgiveness in a real way. It changes us. And that's part of what this communion yeah. is really all about. Uh, he wants us to experience and know this forgiveness. There's, uh, it not, see, he's also created us, our brains, in a way that this remembering thing becomes more clear when you study the, the human body a little bit. And you guys know some of the stuff that we faced as a family with my son, Josh, and so I've read a bunch of books on the, on the brain and the intricacies of the brain and how the brain works. And there's this part of our brain called the reticular activating system. Have you heard of that before? It's a really powerful part of our brain. They're incre incredibly complex, and we can sift through billions, billions of different pieces of information uh, at any given time and be able to sort them to get the things that matter most, organizing that information. And the part of our brain that does that is the reticular activating system, which is, um, is a bundle of nerves at our brainstem that just has this ability to be able to, with obviously practice and learning some things and, and remembering some things that we can filter out some of the stuff that's unnecessary and focus in on the things that are. Let me give you an example of how this happens. Um, let's just say you buy a car and all of a sudden you're familiar with that particular model of car. You know what I'm talking about? Then all of a sudden you see it everywhere. How did that happen? Because before you never saw that car before. And all of a sudden, now you're like, oh, there's one, like, what up, you know, <laughs> got one just like you, you know, and it's something in our, like the day before, you didn't recognize that model of car before, but now you do. See, it's that part of our brain that's filtering information before, mm -hmm. it was just one more vehicle on the road of life. Now, they're your people. <laughs> the same thing can happen, let's just say we're in a very, you know, noisy room, and there's lots of information being thrown around, and maybe there's ambient noise and loud noise, and it's just chaotic, and there's lots of stuff, and your brain's filtering all kinds of things. And then all of a sudden, in the middle of all that craziness, you hear your name called. What happens? You're able to filter that information and focus in. Even though there's all this periphery noise, you're able to focus in because you've trained your brain with your reticular activating system to sort the information that is most necessary. Hmm. You see, this is what Jesus knew when he said, remember, do this often. Train your mind to pay attention to what matters most. Do this. 
in remembrance of me. Yeah, absolutely. And when we, when we can learn to remember often, it's gonna spark that reticular activating system to do exactly what it was designed to do and help us to remember that sacrifice that Jesus made for us on the cross. And it allows us to, to approach life with a completely different attitude and, and kind of this holy swagger that we're unpacking today. Um, so we're, I wanna jump into a passage of scripture, Luke chapter 22. You can open your Bibles or you can check it out on the Sky Bible behind us. That's what I tell the students on Sunday nights. Um, we're gonna be in Luke chapter two. Um, but, but Jesus and his disciples are sitting down in this passage to, to celebrate the Passover, uh, which was a time in their um, culture to, to, to remember and to celebrate what Jesus had done for ancient Israel. And so this was a super important thing for them to do every year. It's kind of like uh, they did it every single year, like we would sit down to have a Thanksgiving giving meal, something like that. Um, but this time was about to be a time that they had like never experienced before. Jesus is about to throw a massive curveball their way. And I wish that I could have been there to, to see some of their reactions and to see their faces as Jesus um, changes the game up on them. So let's jump, jump in here in verse 14. Uh, and it says, when the time came, Jesus and the apostles sat down together at the table, and Jesus said, I have been very eager to eat this Passover meal with you before my suffering begins. For I tell you now that I won't eat this meal again until its meaning is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. Then he said, take this and share it among yourselves, for I will not drink wine again until the kingdom of God has come. He took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it into pieces and gave it to the disciples saying, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took another cup of wine and said, this cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice for you. So as I said, Jesus takes this Passover meal and he throws the hardest curveball that the disciples have probably seen to this point. They've grown up celebrating this Passover meal and Jesus says, hold up, right? He, or he takes these elements, but it's like sitting down for Thanksgiving dinner at grandma's house. You've done it a hundred times. You've had her, her Thanksgiving turkey. You know exactly what it tastes like. Your mouth is beginning to water as you just expect it to come out of the oven. The honey glazed ham, mashed potatoes, all of it. And all of a sudden, she rolls up with Mexican food. It's something completely different than what you're expecting. That's what Jesus does here in total Jesus fashion. And he says, hey guys, this is what you've been doing and celebrating, but I'm about to make this even better. And Jesus takes the bread and he takes the wine and, and he uses them as symbols, but it's something that, that the disciples yet don't understand. Yeah, totally. Sometimes we have to remember, try and find yourself a little bit more in the story. <clears throat> remember what's happening as far as the rest of the context of the story, Jesus has been alluding to and talking about the fact that he's going to the cross, but he hasn't done that yet. These guys are confused. And in preparation for what he's doing, and he's trying to get these guys focused on the things that do matter the most, he says, look, this is something I'm gonna ask you to do forever. And I want you to do this with regularity. Just like there was this meal that had lots of symbols for the nation of Israel's deliverance, God's work in the history of the nation of Israel to free them from the captivity in, in, uh, in Egypt. <clears throat> now he's saying, I want you to... But they didn't know what he was talking about. They didn't get it. And we see that clearly in scripture. And then I, I was thinking this week, just imagine, I wonder who it was. I could probably guess. I'd like to guess. But wouldn't it be cool to know which of the disciples it was that first went, What? I get it now. Guys, get over here. Do you remember what Jesus was talking about when he told us to take the bread and to take the wine that his body was going to be broken for us, that his blood was going to be? This is what he was talking about. And we know at some point that happened because they all stacked hands. And if you read the gospels from there, they were willing to die for it. They were willing for their lives to count in such a way that they would communicate this message to everyone that would listen, it mattered. And I don't know if you've had that moment where it's come alive to you. It needs to be more than just spiritual rote and, and just religiosity. This needs to be something, and what Jesus wanted was for, for this to be something that would activate the way our minds are connected to what God has done for us. That can happen for you mm. right now here today. Yeah, absolutely. Guys, communion is and, and absolutely should be a time to, to pause, reflect, remember God's holiness, and examine our hearts and remember the cross. 
But there's also, that, that's the holy part to this holy swagger. But then the swagger comes into play when we take time often to pause and remember the cross. See, when I remember the cross, my past is changed because I know that, that my king is redeeming and restoring my past. It doesn't matter the, the, the decisions I made, good or bad, he's using that for his glory. And I know that when I remember the cross right here in this moment, he can give me confidence to do whatever he's asking me to do. And I know when I remember the cross that he's with me right here, right now, today, that gives me confidence to walk with this holy swagger. And because of that, I know that my king has ensured a spot for me in eternity, when I remember the cross and remember the sacrifice that he made for me and for you, man, that should give us this this swagger to approach every single day with this new realization and new attitude of, man, my king's got this. Like, I can do this because he's gone before me. He's leading me and I'm following. And that should give us a holy swagger when we can learn to pause and our main thought or constant remembrance of that event, remembering the cross is gonna prompt a holy swagger. Now we're talking about activating this part of our brain that would, that would cause us to filter the noise and focus in on what matters, that reticular activating system. And so this week I was, I was praying, Lord, I want this to last beyond the weekend. I want it to last beyond today. So could there be a way for us to be reminded, for this to activate in our minds that we'd be reminded of everything that God's done? So I got an assignment for you. You ready? You guys know these little stickers that you see all over town? We call this P-Squigs, right? It's kind of our brand, it's our logo, it's our mark. It's everywhere, you look around, you see it on sweatshirts and stuff. And I love when I see it on cars. I've been up all the way in Denver and seen these on cars, so thank you for those of you who do that. And uh, I want you this week, when you see this sticker, to thank God for what he's done for you. How about that? If that could just change, just in that moment, Just say, Lord, thank you for what you did on the cross. Give me that holy swagger. Help me to walk in that confidence because of what you've done. And the second thing I'm going to ask you to do is if you don't have one on your car, put it on your car. Because that will remind all of us in a greater way and will help people to be exposed in many ways and be reminded to to the reality of what Jesus has done. But here's the deal. When you do this, there's two things. First of all, I need you to put this on right So you peel off the back, stick it on, and peel off the front. I've seen them with the front still on. That's just not good. So so it looks good. And then, will you drive nicely? (laughs) Because it's going to be really hard for me to focus on Jesus if you cut me off, okay? (laughs) I might be saying a prayer, but it might not be the one we're talking about, right? But if we can do that together, I think it will help. As a matter of fact, when Paul is talking about this, he's he's, uh, talking in 1 Corinthians, giving some instruction to the church on how to do communion well. And he's quoting Jesus in this passage, and then he says something that is really important for you and I to remember today as we head into this. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 27 and 28, again, Paul is speaking, and he says this. So anyone who eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord unworthily is guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Now look at verse 28. That is why you should examine yourself before eating the bread and drinking the cup. See, we're not to do this in just kind of blind, rote religiosity. We're supposed to engage our minds. And just like Jesus said, do this often in remembrance of me to reflect on our lives and be grateful for what he's done. Dylan, explain that. Yeah, so, I mean, we're gonna give you an opportunity to do that, to pause today, um, to, to reflect and remember the cross, as Jesus says, do this often. But today, if, if you've been um, just with us and kind of as we're unpacking this, thinking uh, like, man, this is awesome, but I, f- I feel like there might be something missing. Today, I wanna ask you, do you know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? Because if you don't, he wants to redeem and restore your past. He wants to give you confidence today. He wants to be with you today. And he wants to give you such confidence and assure your future in him. And if you haven't experienced that yet today, we're gonna give you an opportunity to do that here in just a second. And I can tell you it's the best decision you can ever make in your life. But if you do know Jesus, and today you've been sitting with us and you're thinking, man, maybe I've, maybe I've lost a little bit of my swagger. When we pause and when we reflect, we have an opportunity to kind of, to kind of start over. Remembering that Jesus, he says, I forgive you. 
And whoever you are today, I want you to leave this service with a little bit more of a holy swagger, knowing that your king loves you, knowing that he went before you, he paid the ultimate sacrifice just for you, if that's all that matters. So in preparation, would you, would you bow your head and close your eyes? And today, if, if that is you, that you don't yet know the saving grace of, of Jesus Christ, today I want to invite you to just kind of pray this simple prayer with me. And it's just, Jesus, thank you. Thank you for the sacrifice that you've made for me on the cross. And, and, and today, I, I believe that, maybe for the first time, that, that that God, you sent your son down to, to die for me. Where his body was broken and his blood was shed for me, for my sins. Because he knew that I couldn't do it alone. And Jesus, I accept your free gift of eternal life because I know I can't do it alone. And I thank you for, for now being the Lord of my life and allowing me to walk with confidence each and every day. And maybe, maybe you do know the Lord. Today, I want you to, to pray this prayer with me. Father, thank you for the sacrifice. And today, I choose to remember. I choose to remember what you've done for me, your body that was broken and your blood that was shed on the cross. And, and I know that that should give me the ability to approach life with a holy swagger. Father, help me to do that well this week. Help me to, to encourage others by the way that I walk. And Jesus, thank you. Thank you for, for reminding me and I pray that there will be many more opportunities this week to remind me of your faithfulness and of your sacrifice that you've paid for me. It's in your holy name that we pray, amen. Well guys, we're gonna get ready to, to put this into action and take communion together. Um, you can stay seated, the ushers are gonna come forward uh, and pass out the elements, hold on to those. Um, and, and the band's gonna just play one song um, as we take time to pause and reflect on what, what God has done for us, what, what God has done for you. Um, so hold on to those. And we practice open communion here at Plum Creek, which means you don't have to be a member or call Plum Creek home. We just ask that you have a, a living, moving relationship with Jesus. And maybe today um, is your first day in that, and praise God for that. But we, we invite you guys to take communion with us here in just a second. As I said, the band's gonna play, and then I'll come back out and lead us in corporate communion.
Amen, amen. You guys can uh, stand up, go ahead and stand to your feet. Well guys, we've talked the talk, now let's walk the walk. Father, we love you. Jesus, we adore you, and today we take time to hit pause and remember the sacrifice that you made for each and every one of us. Jesus, today we remember your body that was broken. We take the bread. Thank you, Jesus. And we remember as you hung on that cross for each and every one of us, paid the ultimate sacrifice for our sin, Jesus, your blood poured out for us. We take the cup. Jesus, we love you. We adore you. We thank you for the sacrifice that you made. And because of that, Father, help us to live with the holy swagger. Help us to be reminded each and every day of the sacrifice that you've made for us so that we can walk different, so that we can, we can act different, and we can approach our life different because we are different because of you, Jesus. We love you. It's in your holy name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Friends, don't let this be the last time this week that you take time to hit pause and remember what Jesus has done for you. Let's do that often. Take Doug's challenge with the Plum Creek sticker, slap that on your car. And every time you see one of those, take time to just hit pause and remember what Jesus has done. Let's finish today uh, in celebration of worship. There's one more song. We would love to continue worshiping with you guys. So thank you for, for uh, being with us today. Let's finish in worship. I've heard your voice calling out my name. I've felt your touch and I will never be the same. Out of the darkness into light, you ransom me from death into life. Here in this book.
And so, so excited that you were with us this weekend. Men, remember, True Grit Conference coming this fall. There's guys out in the atrium that will help you uh, sign up for that. Tonight, we are groundbreaking for the new children's edition at five o'clock, five to seven o'clock. It's gonna be exciting. It's finally here, it's time. We're breaking ground, so join us. It's gonna be food, fun for the kids, be some inflatables, and then we will dedicate God's project in prayer. Also, if you're new and wanna get connected or find a place to serve, remember first step today, right across the hallway, grab your kids, if you have kids, and then join us. We would love uh, to help you get connected, find a place uh, to serve here, as, here at Plum Creek. Prayer team will be up front. You can drop your offering, your next steps cards at the buckets at the doors and the Peace Quick stickers will be there as well. So grab one of those. You guys have a great rest of your day. We'll see you next weekend.